I think it's already wrapped up. What I miss? NFC North. Oh, you stop it. Mike said a few weeks. Doesn't it kind of feel like we're already there, TJ Lang in the studio? No, not yet. A lot of work left to be done, Jimmy. Oh, you such a football player response. Oh, man. Expect that from Jansen. One week at a time. Yep, one day at a time. There one it is. One play at a time. By the way, Mike. One quarter at a time. Mike, uh, he is at a fall wedding this weekend. That is why he's not here today. Yeah, congratulations. His uh, lovely sister. Nah. Getting married. <laughs> what? He's in such a bad mood, has to be at a fall wedding. <laughs> He's not happy about it. No. <laughs> miserable. He's miserable. <laughs> we'll talk in a break. <laughs> uh, see, anyway. I'd, I'd rather go to a fall wedding when it's 50 degrees out than a summer wedding where it's 90 degrees. I do not want to do a fall wedding. Is the wedding tonight? It's tomorrow. He's going to miss all the good college yeah, football games. So that's, yeah, that's a problem. If you're going to do, uh, yeah, I've never understood if you're going to do fall, why not just do Friday? Amen. That's, you that's, get the whole, the, the person can take. Your guests can just take Friday off from work, like, and you can celebrate, do whatever you want, and you got Saturday to recover. I yeah. think they're doing it a week too early. Should have did it next oh. week. Oh. <laughs> Should've I believe that for, almost uh, happened, I think. Oh Should have waited imagine. for Michigan, Michigan State weekend. That, that, TJ, that's, that's what okay. Is that next week? Yeah. It is? Hey. Oh. TJ Lang, TJ Lang, I thought they were going on a bye. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> welcome in on a Friday. Oh, that's his fault. That's his, you know, his family member. Come on. That's, I blame Mike for that. Anyway, no have him in your thoughts and prayers. I mean, clearly, what a, what a miserable oh, experience. What a poor fella. Yeah. We started the show with Lions fans feeling good, wind beneath our wings, all that stuff, riding high. As you look at Tampa Bay this weekend, do you feel like fans are overlooking this matchup? Uh, are people pretty confident? Oh, I mean, yeah. yeah. Rico, you've been on air all week. People pretty confident? They win every game by double digits. I'm, I'm confident in, in this team. I think they're a really good football team. Uh, I think Tampa's a sneaky good football team as well. I think uh, – watch it, and I might have heard you guys talking about this earlier. They Tampa kind of reminds me of Seattle a little bit. They take care yeah. of the football. They run the ball. Uh, they Their offensive line isn't great. Tristan Wirfs, the left tackle, is a good player. Uh, but the rest of their old line isn't great, but they don't put those guys in positions where they have to one on one 30 times a game, right? It's a lot of max protect, play action, tight ends chipping, the running backs coming out and helping. Uh, you don't get many one on one opportunities against those guys. And I think it's by design. Um, it's good coaching. And they haven't been forced yet to score too many points. I know their offense is probably bottom third of the league when it comes to points per game. But their defense is good. I mean, they've got some players, especially the front seven. Uh, both linebackers are fast. They can go sideline to sideline in a hurry. Vita Vea is obviously a beast there in the middle. But I think our, I think their strengths match up well with our strengths. I think that anytime you have a top, I think it's a top six run game, you've got a top three run defense. Um, those are pillars uh, of a team in the NFL, and those usually travel with you, and they have so far this year uh, on the road games that that this team has played. I don't think it's going to be an easy win. No. I think this game is probably going to maybe look a little bit like the Jets last year where you're going to have to grind it out and you're going to have to try to find a way to make a play late in the game to, uh, to win. I don't think it's going to be a blowout by any means, but I'm confident in this team. I am. I think what we've seen not only this year, but – Really, the last fifteen games, right, twelve and three over that stretch. I think that's 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 who they are, right? That, that's not, that's no mistake. They're not doing it by accident. They're not they're not doing it like last year's Minnesota team that won thirteen or fourteen games, and you're saying, ah, oh, c- come on, like they're getting lucky, you know? They're converting fourth and thirty, you know what I mean? It doesn't have that type of feel to it. It has the feel uh, that what they're doing is sustainable. Now, I know that some of the injuries are a concern, and we'll get to that, you know, hopefully by four o'clock, but. Uh, they've got depth on this team. They've got players on this team. They've they they've they've been able to focus in each week, like that's the only thing that matters. You know what I mean? They don't read their press clippings. They don't worry about oh, we just won three straight games by d- double digits and two scores, whatever it was. Uh, they they forget about it. They they keep their focus, you know, on the next goal, and that's this week. I'm confident in them going down to Tampa. I just don't think it's going to be an easy game. I think Tampa's got. Uh, plenty of power to throw punches with you and make it kind of a dog fight. And you're probably going to have to have some sport, a sort of a spark play from either your defense or special teams 
Um, you know, because offense, I do think Let's it's going to be a grind this week, but I think they're a team that's capable of doing that. See, I'd rather the spark play come from the defense and special teams than what he is saying. Just go for it on every fourth That's down. Not what I said. He's accused me of playing mad. <laughs> Just over go here. for it on Brandon every fourth Staley down. Over right. Here, huh? No yeah. punter needed. CJ. No field goal kicker needed. We're going for <laughs> it. Don't, Don't even both at home. Yeah. Don't even activate Scott Daly. My Leave thing is, <laughs> no long snappers. <laughs> because I think you have a, a great defense. Lean on them, and if you have to, just punt the ball from midfield. Pin them in there. Get it back and start all over again. Don't take unnecessary chances because this is the type of game where I see, you know what, it's a field goal type of game. So every field goal that you make will count. So rather than keep being risky because, yeah, it looks great when you go for it and you get it, but if you don't and now you hand the ball over at the 50-yard line, now they just got to travel 20 yards for them to make three points, and that could be the difference in the game. Yeah, and I think, look, field position in, in these type of games, it, it's a big deal, right? Punting isn't the worst thing that's going to happen to you. If you're facing a yeah, – Say that again for the people three, in the back. It's not, well, in these type of games, it's not where – Thank look, you. We could be totally wrong. I think we're all on the same page where we don't expect this to be a 38-35 type of shootout no. game. So, yeah, I mean, if you're pinning them de- deep and you're pinning them inside the 15, inside the 10, that's not a bad thing. That right. is a win against uh, teams where it's going to be a dogfight. So, um, but I'd say, I mean, you, you said we have a great defense. I think the great defense has been p- playing really good. We know they're going to slip up eventually. This is the NFL, right? You're not going to win the rest of your games. This team is not going to be 16-1. and one. They're going to have a game that they're probably going to drop where ah, maybe, maybe a couple plays here or there. Do you have more confidence in the offense being able to sustain what they, they've been doing or the defense? Because I look at this week and I say, I don't really, I don't, I don't expect the Lions to go out there and lay a dud offensively and score 13 points or 14 points. I know they're on a streak of 15 games or so of scoring over 20. I look at the offensive, that's who they are. You know you're going to get probably 23, 24 points out of this offense. I look at it and say, when that time does come, when we're going to slip, it's probably going to look like something in Seattle where you just can't figure them out. And it's just one of those days where the offense, you know, the other team's offense is just making plays and they're getting the 50, 50 balls and they're getting all the bounces. They're what, you know what I mean? You know what I'm trying to say? I I, I I do, but see, I look at it the other way. Defense is good, but I I think think, the defense is, I I lean on the defense more because it seems like it's just been a a merry-go-round of who's going to be playing in the game. This guy's not playing this guy, but they still just come out and get it done. And defense when you start getting good, it becomes contagious, and you just start believing in yourself, and you put that fear factor in other teams. And I kind of see that with this defense now, where you know, what I mean, I mean, you know, uh, uh, the uh, Bryce Young just looks shells like every the last three quarterbacks all just took off their helmets and were just like, "Wow, um, I don't, I don't know what I'm going to do with these this front <laughs> four. I, I mean, they all, yeah, CJ, flustered. you're at, you're yeah. at the game, but if you go back and watch it. The TV shot, and they'll take off the helmet, and it was, you know, there's Jordan Love, and it's that same look like, we're only in the second quarter. I got to go. Yeah, to, you just can't I got two more quarters out. of this. Right. Right. I, I th- it becomes contagious, and this defense, I think they, they, they swarm to the ball. They're just getting it done. I like what they're doing. That I think that if, when they do slip up, it's probably going to be because Goff, or maybe he threw a pick, or tip ball got intercepted, or a fumble, or something like that. I don't think it's going to be on the defense yeah. why they lose. And I think that's the that's probably going to be the breaking point this weekend is when you play a team that pretty evenly matched, in my opinion. I think the Lions are slightly better, um, but the turnovers are going to be a difference, right? I, I know the Lions got back into positive territory last week after the three takeaways they had against Carolina, um, but Tampa Bay, a big reason why they're 3-1 and one is because they're the, the 10 takeaways in four games that are plus seven uh, through four games, which is... <laughs> You're getting, you know, two takeaways a game. That's how you win football games. So I think that, yes, if there is a way that they find a way to slip or maybe give a, away a, a game, it's probably going to be because of the turnover differential. Um, but man, I just, I really can't. It's almost like last week where you couldn't really picture Carolina scoring a whole lot of points. I'm kind of, pick, I'm kind of thinking the same way. I don't picture Tampa maybe going over 17, 20. I think if the Lions, if you stay on the streak, you're out of 20 points plus and. 15 straight games, that might be enough to win this game. It might be a race to whoever gets to 21 or maybe 23 you don't first. Break out I, the, I think the Lions got to have a better chance. PJ, you don't break out the creamsicle jerseys to score 13. <laughs> <laughs> that was like a uh, 
a homecoming choice that they made. Like uh-huh. they thought they had an easy team coming in for the creamsicle reunion. I'll tell you what, I mean, and you go back and you listen to everybody's the teams that the Lions have played, you listen to post game press conferences, coaches, opposing players, whoever it is. It's been nothing but like not shock, but we knew this is a good football team, man, and, and they kicked our ass, right? Like that's how the last three games have been. Um, it's not embarrassing. You know, I can't believe we lost to that team. What we heard out of Aaron Rodgers last year uh, when the Lions knocked him off that first game uh, at Ford Field. Right. This year's different. I think every team knows now this is a this is a real team. This is a legit team, and they're proving that. And they've obviously been able to do it the last couple weeks. And I really don't feel this week's going to be that much different. But you got to go out there and take care of business. And that's something that's been admirable about this team is that they don't celebrate wins like it's the Super Bowl. They don't celebrate wins like oh, they were the underdog and they just shocked the world, right? They go in, they take care of business, bam, we got got this one, let's move on to the next one. This just so happens to be the next one. Look, it projects a lot of confidence that they're favored on the road against a first-place team. And they've earned that with the way they've been playing. They have. And I think fans are starting to get used to this, but this is uncharted territory for Lions fans. Like, oh, we're good, and we beat people by double digits back-to-back-to-back weeks, favored going on the road against a team with a winning record, expected to win and that's where we said well how far are you willing to take this because if you think you're just going to roll in and roll up and beat everybody handily not so fast sounds like you're making the case low scoring close game down to the wire got to make a play at the end to win it that's kind of what i'm i'm saying yeah and i mean this could be a 34 to 20 game right like i don't know but it just you look at everything you look at the way they kind of compare i mean baker mayfield is playing Pretty damn good football. I mean, he leads the NFL right now on third down. I think he's completing about 80% of his passes. He doesn't he, get hit. He he doesn't get hit. He does nice sacks all family. year. But even when he does see pressure, he also leads the league in in, in passer rating when, when he's getting pressured. I mean, he's I'm not saying, trying to say he's some MVP type guy, but he is a guy that's good uh, enough re- where re- if you let him get comfortable, he can beat you. He reminds me of Geno Smith last year where everybody was just kind of like, Geno Smith? This guy? Yeah, he can't keep doing this, right? And then he just kept doing it and yeah. doing it, yeah. So. And they've got, I mean, you know, Mike Evans, I mean, he's a, he's a different animal out there on the outside. Godwin's good. Their, their run game, obviously, is has been struggling. I don't think they have a run longer than 15 yards this year. They're not an explosive offense. I think they're almost dead last when it comes to offensive uh, explosive plays. You know where the Lions rank uh, in explosive plays in the NFL? Where? Second behind the Miami Dolphins. And they have the most explosive pass plays, which is surprising. The Dolphins have the most run plays, wait, over so, 20 so, yards. Wait, wait, so I can call you guys all privileged it's, now? It's <laughs> So I can call you privileged? Isn't that like oh, a... So, so golf is just like Purdy. They're both privileged. Isn't that like a sneaky stat? Like, I, I had to do a double take. Like, yeah. no way. You don't look at this Lions well, we offense as being Johnson explosive. Has a good offense. Well, right, but, but you look at them as being kind of the, hey, we're just going to hammer you, hammer you, and then by the fourth quarter, we're going to wear you out, right? The body blows. You don't think of this team as being... Uh, an explosive team, but they are. They're second in the NFL right now in most of explosive plays. I thought that sh- uh, stack was shocking. TJ tells you, Lions privilege. Or <laughs> TJ, your calls, text next 97 1.